Yo, it's the Falcon Outlaw. This is the home for hip hop on the mic, Paul Ashore. You have to tune in. Big up. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Thank you for clicking. Make sure you go get that new merch I just dropped. Y'all been waiting for it. Now go cop it. Look at these beautiful pieces. I know you want one. Do not hesitate. And without any further ado, hit the lights for my real hip hop heads only. The story of hip hop is one that is of course being continuously written. But when the tome is complete, though I have no power to steer its eventual direction, I put forth into the universe a wish that it be meticulously recorded, that our best and brightest enabled the evolution, progression, and dominance of an art that reigned undisputedly supreme over 100 some odd years after it began. The man on the left side of your screen in the red corner is here to remind your fickle ass what you might have forgot about dirty jurors. A, hey, Lauren Hill, poor righteous teachers, red man, naughty by nature, and now Rashid Chappelle continues the legacy of that prolific spit hailing from hallways that 95% of us are not equipped to venture into. But his voice made it out carried across the ocean in multi-layered cadences to transport our stories to folks who actually respect the nuance. And in doing so, gives us not a choice as to whether his energy will make us better. My unbiased report is that it does just that. To keep it a buck, Jersey still talk that talk. There is no such thing as better than this man, only as good as. You disagree, then your ears are fucking broke. Pay attention, because this is the last time I'm ever going to say this. Ladies and gentlemen, broke niggas and ballers, sophisticated women and last minute jump offs, turnstile hoppers and three car molly droppers. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to hip hop's lyrical Swiss army knife, hailing from the almighty city of Passaic, New Jersey, AKA styles upon styles upon styles, AKA Mr. Don't let this smile fool you and top 10 entry on 2021 list of niggas you don't want smoke with Rashid Chappelle is in the building. Salute, salute, salute. I like everything you said. I, I can't disagree with anything. <laughs> hey, that's mighty gracious of you. I really need the AC on right now. It's a moment right here. You know yeah. what I mean? People have been at me, DMs like, yo, have you, have you heard this dude? Have you seen this dude? When I start to tap in, the thing is you everywhere, you with everybody. So let's get into it. The work is real, and it's my honor to have you on the platform, so thank you. All right, you are from Passaic, New Jersey. Is that correct? That's a fact. Okay. Um, take me to the ground level of uh, Passaic. What, is, what, what was it like growing up? Uh, what's it like right now? Um, you know, growing up in Passaic, you know, the 80s was um, – I mean, I had a lot of fun. There was a, there was a, there was a lot of activity uh, going on uh, as far as things for kids to do, uh, basketball, football, boxing, a lot of things that, you know, kept us active, uh, especially in the projects where I grew up in. Um, we had our own boys club in the, in the back of Building 45. But also amongst all that, there was also a lot of other activity going on at the same time. So my father used to like, hustle a little bit um, with weed. And so like some of my earliest memories is getting raided and shit like that. But, um, wow. you know, Pacific was primarily a mix of black and Latino. Um, I want to say maybe it was uh, when I was coming up, maybe about 50, 50. Now it's probably 70%, um, maybe even more Latino, uh, black, but, um, you know, it was only 3.2 square miles. So it was one middle school, one high school, Everybody knows everybody. Um, it's, it's only fucking 13 miles, not even 13 miles. Uh, it's like 13 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. So, oh, uh, okay. 
Yeah, we that close. Hey, um, who has the best soul food in Passaic? Is it um, Tiff's, John Jack's, or Charlene's? I don't really eat soul food, so I, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't eat. Wait, have you ever eaten soul food? <laughs> With yeah, I have eaten soul food. You know, my grandparents, you know, my grandmother, I, my great grandmother, when I lived uptown, uh, she used to cook. She used to be a cook, actually, for uh, Della Reese, so she could throw down. Ooh, Della Reese, who knocked the fuck out of Red Fox mm. in Harlem Nights. Classic scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to hit people with garbage cans? <laughs> oh, you want to cheat off my pinky toe. <laughs> He didn't shot off my pinky toe. Hey, um, let me ask you this. These questions are a little bit out of order. I usually try to be a little bit smoother, but we're going to see how this go. What have you learned? Uh, what have you seen to make you uh, so happy? Because uh, you have an incredibly positive attitude, it seems to me. And um, it, it, you could talk about, like, haters, and you still it's, you have a positive vibe about you. Um, what what is this that you have learned over your lifetime that caused you to be so positive? I've learned that it could go the other way very quickly. Mm. So I never understood um, going to a party, talking to 10 chicks, getting four numbers and coming back to the diner and talking about the six chicks that didn't give you the telephone number. That mm. makes sense. You know? So my focus has always been on those that support me. It, it, it benefits me not worrying about those that don't support me when I got people that support me. Like, um, my mom has been in and out of the penile system since I'm 12 years old. Hmm. You know, so not my dad, my mom, you know, so that's in the black community, the staple of the household. So imagine being 12 years old, raising a three year old cause my sister's younger than me and I got to make sure she's good. Cause my dad is getting high on crack. You know what I mean? So mm. I've had a lot of things that I've seen where it can go the other way quickly. You know, you this. How's, it, how's the relationship going between you and your parents, both of them? Oh, right now we're good, man. Like we're really good. You know, it took a long, it took a lot of healing. It took a lot of forgiveness, you know, and understanding that, you know, they're just human beings. They got their own shit too. You know, we want them to be superhuman. We want them to be uh, invincible. But at the end of the day, you know, they come from an era, you know, not too far removed. You know, my mom graduated in like 76. So hmm. when she was born, you know, down in D.C., it was still all types of you think it's wild now with the police and shit like that. You know, my pops was born down in Texas. So the shit that he saw, you know, as a kid, you know, separate, uh, segregated this, segregated that, like it, it played a lot into the psyche of it. Um, And are they tapped into what you're doing and the kind of noise that you're making and the kind of respect that you've been receiving? My mom, to an extent, like she, she, she just recently got on Instagram. So she's on every post as of late. Um, she's actually come to some shows. My dad, I'm just his son. Like that's like, he literally just called me today to take him to DC to go see his friend. I'm like, dad, like I'm dropping an album. Like this week I, I'm busy. I, I can't just hop in the car and take you down to DC. So, I mean, that's tapped in. My little sister is, like, one of my biggest fans. You know, like, she's walking up to people. You're not better than my brother. I'm like, Tanae, like, what are you talking about? And like, they're not better than your brother. I not. would agree. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. How does that make you feel that your mom is, like, happy to see you want to come up? Your sister's, you know, uh, bigging you up and stuff like that. Man, I'm just happy to see my mom clean, bro. Like, I'm just happy to see my mom's alive. Like, she and I... Um, she's my first love. So mm. she was really going through it. It was, it was, it was hard to see. It was terrible to see. And so to have her of, of sober mind and of conscious mind and still be here, you know, because, you know, I've told her there was times that I, I, I just wish that it would be over. That way I didn't have to deal with seeing her like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wish that, you know, it was over, man, you know? Yeah. Um, well, we we glad to, to see her clean, and we we gonna put it in the atmosphere that she gonna remain that way. Um, is there a perception out there that you are the nice guy of hip hop? Not to the people that don't think I'm the nice guy of hip hop. I don't. I don't think. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I've been I've been told that you know um, my humility disarms people or makes people feel comfortable, but. Um, 
you know, like I'm, I'm just not with the shits, you know what I mean? So my whole thing is like, I don't have time to entertain all of the extra shit. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the, uh, from my experience, the dudes that walk around with the scowls on their face, mm. they, they not really about that life. Yeah. You know, so. Let's get to this. You, you got a new album with Buck Wild. Mm-hmm. Legend, okay. Um, to be in with a legend, uh, what does that tell you about where you are right now as an artist? Um, it tells me that I'm on the right path, but you know, honestly, my, my first album was with a legend. My first two albums was produced entirely by DJ Kenny Dope, who Kenny Dope, yeah. is fucking the Quincy Jones of house music, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like one half of Masters at Work. So I came in um, getting, you know, accolades from Lord Finesse and OC and things like that, because those are the people that I studied. I just wanted to be great. Like I'm like I'm not with I'm not online saying that I'm great. This is art. You should I don't do none of that shit. My thing is let the music speak for itself, right? Good product needs no advertisement. When it's good, it needs no advertisement. It needs no smoke, no mirrors, none of that. No glitch, no glam. When it's good, the people will find it. Yeah. And I know right now the market is extremely saturated, so people are doing what they can to kind of separate themselves from what everyone is doing, but I feel they're doing that because they're all copying the same sound. Mm. My shit don't sound like that. Wow. Like I I said in the intro, styles upon styles upon styles. Like uh, Swiss Army Knife of hip hop. Um, Because as I go through your catalog, there is not just this, the one thing that is constant is the bar work. Thank you. A high level of execution, but everything else seems to be. You seem to you like how Stevie Wonder kind of went into every single area of R and B and said, "Yo, I know I could do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do you this real quick, and I'm gonna jump up out of here." You listen to like Master Blaster, or you listen to like his 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 pop power pop ballads. You go into that area and do that. I just called to say I love you or something like that. You know the straight R and B thing. You know so, and you do that. You go into all of these different kind of areas. You pick up these different cadences. You execute on an extremely high level, and then you move on to the next thing. Um, and I think that's exciting uh, about you. Um, people have always said in hip hop, and I guess they're not saying it as much as they used to because of the proliferation of the garbage that's out there right now, but we, they, they used to say, I need this guy to spit more. I need to, you gotta be different. You got, you go in the game, all of that. The thing that we've been asking for for a very long time, you delivering that. So we wanna get more eyeballs on your face and more ears on your music. What is the magic? about you that even when you talk about these unfortunate circumstances in your music, you seem to always um, put out this air of, um, of just confidence and optimism. You know, I don't know what the magic is and, and, I, and I hope I never find it because then I'll probably be too focused on it. You know what I mean? I kind of just let it happen. Like the music speaks to me and it's so funny that you mentioned Stevie Wonder because my biggest influences don't come from rap music. It comes from, you know, one of the best gifts that my mom ever gave me was the love of music. So we would sit down. She had a huge album collection. Yeah. And we would sit down and read the, um, the, the lyrics, the song lyrics. And, and we were, and, and, and I would just be entranced by the melodies and, and how he was putting words together, whether it be Stevie Wonder or anything written by Gambling Huff mm. or anything from Motown, the way Smokey was able to do it, not only for himself, but for the Jacksons and the Temptations. And so that's the thing that that's where my ability to, to, to adapt and, and, and touch so many different lanes of the music comes from because I'm a human being. So I have all these different emotions. So I don't have to be just tapped into the street because at 16 years old, I was on a plane going to Bahamas for the summer. You know, at set, at 15, 16 years old, I was, um, you know, headed to a college retreat for the top uh, 100 or uh, 200 juniors in, in the state at the time. You know, so I've been blessed to see things. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, my family is from Texas, D.C. I got Philly. So I, I moved around. I saw a lot of different things. And um, I, I didn't want to get caught up or trapped into any box. So the magic, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just know that when I hear the music, it speaks to me in such a way that, you know, my life experiences and, you know, the things that I've read, the things that I've experienced, the things that I've seen, the emotion that I feel as a human, it just allows it to come out the way that it happens. 
And on the song Still Standing with Apollo Brown, mm -hmm. uh, you say that when you spit your first rhyme, your homies clown you. Is that a true story? I, I, I pride myself on being as truthful as I possibly can, of course, without incriminating anybody or um, adding any extra to it. That is an actual story. I, my man, Damon, shout out to Dane. Um, he had a, a house on uh, up the hill and uh, that was like the hangout house. And so he was a senior in high school. I was a freshman. And I'm hanging out with the seniors and, and uh, we all in his basement, couple hustlers in there. And um, they were talking about this one dude that rap in the city. And I'm like, yo, well, I rap. And they're like, she can, you don't fucking rap. Get out of here. I'm like, nah, I rap. And I spit this rhyme. And uh, I spoke to Dane probably about a week ago. And he was bugging out because he was like, yo, the rhyme that you, and he was the jokester. So he was the one that, was the one that initiated everything. And so when I spit the rhyme, I mean, niggas was literally holding their bellies on the ground, rolling like, oh <laughs> shit, that shit. And he was the only one, he was the only one that didn't laugh. And oh, he was okay. like, yo, he was like, yo, the shit you talking about is crazy, but the way you putting it together is, is out of here. You need to stick with that shit. Nice. And I, that's what I was going to say. What did that moment mean to you? Like, how important was that? It's very important, man. But I've always been, uh, I don't give a fuck what other people say type of guy. Like, okay. that's always been my mentality. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, your new song and video, I hope this is a new one, because I know y'all drop videos, you know, quicker than I could catch up. Mass Media. Uh, song and the video is so powerful. You talk about Breonna Taylor on there uh 5g well i know that there's a there's that picture of brianna taylor and you kind of you referencing these events that's going on the 5g towers i think you you mentioned fox news in there um and vaccines so let's break it down overall what was the message you were trying to send and do you think there is some truth to the rumors about the whole 5g thing whether there's truth or not as a human being as a, as somebody that is walking around as a society you should investigate it yourself. A lot of us, that's the whole message of the mass media. We just digest whatever's being fed to us without actually doing the research ourselves. I bump into so many people that tell me that they, they got this information and it's from YouTube or it's from the news. They've never done the research themselves. My uncle, one of my OGs, definitely one of my mentors used to tell me all the time, you need three sources. One that supports your argument, mm -hmm. one that's against your argument, and one that's neutral. And then from there, because you, you then from there, you kind of formulate what your idea, what your opinion is going to be. Right. Great. So, I, great. great. That, that, that's such so, so great advice. Uh, as a journalist, I do have to press you, your beliefs personally on 5G. What about them? <laughs> so no. it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I guess the rumor is that um, it's, it's, it's causing us harm that the, I guess the radiation or the energy that's coming out of there is something that's going to create cancer. Early in the Corona pandemic, people were saying that 5G kind of was associated with the coronavirus. I, I'm not sure that that's uh, a theory that's still floating around out there, but this is a very serious thing going on across the globe. People running up on people installing these poles and they seem to think that these 5G towers can do them some harm. Your, do your research, what have you found? Well, from my personal research, there's a book that I read many years ago called Health and Light by Dr. John Ott. And it talks about, we know that microwaves are no good for us. So we know that radio waves traveling through the human body is no good for us. So the speed at which a 5G and the, 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 the radiation that is given off from 5G, from what I've heard, can cause an imbalance within the human body. Just the physiology of how we're created, it can cause an imbalance. And we know that disease is really a dis-ease, right? So if there's any type of compromise to any type of immune system, which all of us, unless you're 100% plant-based, alkaline body, we're all experiencing it just because of the foods that we eat. I definitely think that it can actually cause some harm. You know, um, he did an experiment where he put plants in front of televisions uh, for the same amount of time that an average child will watch TV coming home from school or during the day, during the week, and the roots of the plants actually began to grow the opposite way. And this is just from something as simple as a television ray, uh, television wave, right? So 
a 5G, a micro, a radio, uh, a 4G, you know, like these things, phones, they say have been linked to cause cancer on the brain from where people hold it to the side of their head. So all of these things are things that definitely need to be, I'm no medical doctor, so I can't give you a definitive answer on it. Uh, but they're definitely things that I, I take, I, I'm pretty cautious of. Let me ask you this. If you could talk to one person dead or alive, who would it be? I'd probably like to have a conversation with alive Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm. Um, dead. I don't know. Maybe my, if I could have another conversation with my Uncle John that passed away, that'd be cool. On, on Stay Sharp, you said Jesus is, Jesus is a black man. So is the devil. Talk to me about that line. I just want to hear you expound on that. I mean, the mentality of God, the mentality of the devil resides in all of us, right? So I'm of the belief that you can't say that all good things come out of Africa without it, not understanding that bad things come out of Africa as well, right? Because yeah. yeah. we're, we're the full gamut, right? So mm -hmm. it wasn't the first man that, that came out of Africa, but it was the last man as well. So it was the highest evolution of man that came out of Africa as well. So to even understand that if we, got, if we dive into, you know, the, you know, because I, I was a junior minister in the Nation of Islam when I was in high school, but if we just dive into, you know, the math of it and we do the story of Yaqub, it comes from us. You know, it's the opposite of us, but it comes from us. You know, it's the opposite by nature, but it comes from us. So to understand that, you know, the mentalities reside in all of us, because I can be righteous but at the same time, I could, you know, I could, I could definitely go the other way yeah. when, when I need to. Um, your music is seasoned um, with conscious thought throughout. Um, it comes out of nowhere, right? Um, it's real quick, then on to the next, but it's always there. How important is adding those gems to your rhymes? It's very important, man. I, I think, I think, I mean, the, the artists that I grew up listening to, like, it was cool to be conscious. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, like brand Nubian. It was cool. Yes. You know, it, um, Nas, uh, AZ, uh, Wu-Tang, you know, like these guys dropped jewels in between some of the illest street rhymes you ever heard. You know what I mean? And, and I, and I, and I think that that to me, it, it attracted me because the life I was living. So I'm living in the, in the hood, but, you know, I'm walking the streets with a with a bow tie on at 15, selling bean pies, selling final calls, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm going home and there's no lights because my mom is locked up. You know what I mean? I got a drug dealer bringing me to his crib um, so that I don't sell drugs. He got me ironing clothes and, and running errands and doing shit to give me bread to keep me off the street. Like this, this is crazy. Like this, this, this was my life. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, it was just a crazy time. So as I'm being exposed to this music and this energy, you know, I had the jewels, you know, and, you know, we making Salat. And then after that, I'm going with him to go make a drop off. You know what I mean? So it was just. You ever kind of entangled in some, you know, crazy moments when you was, you know, riding shotgun with this particular individual? <laughs> None that I would disclose. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> we not we not Vlad, so we not gonna keep asking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what was the rhyme you couldn't get out of your head when you was like thirteen or fourteen? Mine was Chinese arithmetic by Rakim. Shit, maybe uh, when they reminisce over you. Ooh, Trouble T Roy. Yeah. Yo, classic. Mecca and the Soul Brother is the album. People, people yeah. I can see all smooth called they reminisce yo that's my joint um thank you for bringing that up um you have a very distinctive voice which is so important in, in this particular sport how long did it take you to get that voice in the pocket though and when did you know you turned your voice into an actual instrument yeah it's so funny yo mike i hated my voice Hated it. I, I, I wish that I, I always thought, in my opinion, one of the best voices, pure voices in hip hop, I always thought was like Memphis Bleak. I think oh. Bleak had like the illest voice. I was like, damn, if I had a voice like Memphis Bleak, you know, that, that would be fire. And um, I, didn't, I didn't really like my voice. So I want to say I didn't, I didn't start appreciating my voice until probably... Uh, 
uh, to be honest, man, maybe like 2003, really? 2004. And once I really knew how to, the nuance of it, how to use it and, 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 and get it in that pocket that you talk about, you know? So my thing is about um, this in between the snares. Like if I can have it kind of ride in there and find that, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of like that bounce right there. Like mm-hmm. that, would, that was always something that I, that I strive to do. And I'm a huge fan of like a, uh, black thought like a huge fan you know he's he's probably i mean i've had the conversation that you know with myself like um is he the best mc i've ever heard in my life could and be so but i don't but when i think about when nas is 100 percent on when nas is in his pocket like nobody hits me like that so it, it, it it's it's all these different people who and even rakim with his cadences and so it's kind of like just trying to find that pocket to make your voice the instrument. It took me a while, but once I got it, I just can't, I, I always try to master that on every record. I try to make sure that my voice is like the, the sax. What record, do you remember what record you heard it on? Do, do a completed product and you was like, yo, that's it right there. That's what I need to be sounding like. Um, I did a project in my hood called My Soul Exposed and there was a record called All Falls Down. Mm. And I think that was the record that I was like, okay, all right. Because it was the first time that I wasn't rapping like super aggressive. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like laid back. I'll never forget my man Seth was at the studio. I was like, yo, should I spit it like this? Or should I spit it like this? And he was like, yo, you should do it like that. And it was a kind of more, kind of more how I rap now. Mm-hmm. And um, that was the one. Cool. Um, I love the nuance in the way you craft your bars. Uh, the, the song uh, Banana Kings on Broadway. Yeah. Uh, where you match the rhythm of your rhyme with the scratches in the chorus. Uh, do you find being a true lyricist to be a sacrifice? Like it's not, it's not the fast money route. Um, it's the long game, right? Uh, where a lot of cats seem to be getting bread off of bullshit. That ever cross your mind though, that you can go into that world and do what they do better than they do it, but you just prefer not to? I mean, I, I, I've thought about it. Uh, my prior management team uh, managed Black Eyed Peas. Hmm. So they're global, mm-hmm. you know, superstars. And when I first got with them, they were trying to kind of like move me in a direction, you know, like to kind of be a bit more poppy mm-hmm. or, or, or just more polished. Right, more mainstream. Know, but, yeah, yeah. And so, but I thank them because it taught me how to craft hooks. It taught me how to proper song structure. Yep. Yeah. It eventually led to me working with like Raheem Devon and, and shit like that. So um, I learned how to write songs and I thought that was very important, but I never, I, I don't, I don't think about doing like Mike, it's, it's so crazy. I was having this conversation literally last night. I could care less what anybody else is doing. Like I, I really could care less because my whole thing is like, I look at um, a Floyd Mayweather. He, he was telling them for years, I'm the shit. I'm great. Yeah. And it wasn't until he, you know, and he had to do it the long way. Like he had to do it the hard way because nobody was calling to fight Floyd. Nobody that had any status or anything was calling to fight Floyd. Right. You know, so he had to do it on his own terms. And, you know, I feel the same way. Like the, the, the people who are touted as the guys, they're not, they're not calling for me to get on a record. They're not, they're not reaching out to me saying, Yo, right. let, let's get on a record. But the you right know? ones are, though. The right ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, so let me do this. Let me go uh, rapid fire. What's the most fire hip-hop fashion trend from back in the day? Most fire? Hip-hop, yeah. Timberlands, right? Gotta be Tim's or Air Force Tim. Ones. Yeah, okay. There we go. We did, you know, I had, a, I had a mishap on some Air Force Ones on my IG. You might not have seen that because you was <laughs> probably busy, but I posted some shoes that was purported to be Air Force Ones. I think Bad Lung showed up and said that what they actually was was the Nikes they put on the Build a Bear. Oh, okay. So you had some foo foos on. <laughs> you had on some foo foos. I got you. He said that they was uh, hydroplane se- sevens. Or <laughs> you had the orthopedic twos. <laughs> but I left it up there. I ain't even deleted. I let people have fun with it. Not looking for any names, but are there any underground MCs that you know who use ghostwriters? You don't got to say names, but do you know anybody that's using ghostwriters that we all know about out here and we love their lyrics? Do you know any information on this? No. 
No. No. No. <laughs> he said no. He said no. That's what he said. Hey, uh, what's more iconic? LL's Kango or the song You Got to Chill by EPMD? I would go to the Kango. I may have to agree with you on that. Did you grow up in the projects? I did. Aspen Place Projects. I grew up between Aspen Place Projects, Building 45, Apartment 6H, uh, building 11, uh, apartment 6C, uh, building 33, apartment 6G. I moved downstairs to the fourth floor. That was the last apart. We moved in, and the day that we were going to move in, my mom was like, nah, we out of here. Like, we had brought all the shit downstairs, and my mom was like, nah, we're not doing this no more. And I grew up on 380 Highland Avenue, Pasig, New Jersey, apartment two. Who was the girl in the projects who kept all the bullshit going. Oh, shit. I'm related to him, but I'm, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm related to some of them. You, re- you related to, to, the, to, the, to the one girl that kept everything banging in the projects? Shit, Dude was friend. fighting and stabbing over the girl? Oh, oh, that girl? Who was, yeah. who, who, who was the chick in the projects? You know, we didn't really fool with project chicks when, when, we, was, when we was living down there, but... My cousin Quadria is uh, the the fucking mayor of the project. So if you ever need anything, that's that's who you go see. Hey, uh, shout to Quadria. Hey, um, what you messing with on Netflix right now? That's nice. Um, honestly, I, I watched this thing called "Win the Wild" it's about kind of like living off grid up in Alaska. Um, I'm about to check out the Queen's Gambit see what that's about is about chess so i want to see what that's about i heard that's pretty good and who would play uh rasheed chappelle in a movie rasheed my son he looks like you uh yeah okay um true or false patrick ewing could have could have and should have done more false Really? You think I don't, you, I don't think he could have? I mean, there's more. I don't think he, the organization didn't put it, the team around him. You don't think that team with uh, Starks, Mason, Ewing, um, who else did they have? Um, your boy from Florida State, the point guard, Charlie you know, Ward. Charlie Ward. Mm-hmm. You don't think that was because they never did? They never got the chip, did they? No, they never got a chip. I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm actually right. uh, a Knicks basher. You know, so to all my Knicks fans out there, like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, I don't know anybody that was alive the last time the Knicks won a championship. You it seem to be, you know, a guy that's always out for his people. Um, you, you're down to educate the folk, and you, you got a great positive attitude, and you seem like uh, a guy that's really down to – help people um so i want to run this by you i got this thing i think maybe you could probably assist me on it because i think if you if you get behind it i think it could blow it's like for both of us i'm okay. honestly i'm seriously asking you so don't be taken aback by this but um uh, this is a big this is it's making me nervous but let me do this okay so, you know, just hear me out. Um, McDonald's got the Travis Scott meal. This is fact. Okay. So, I was thinking, I think you could get behind this. Put your name on it, me and you do this together. Um, Rashid Chappelle meal. I'm thinking. Just stick with me. Okay. So, okay. Fried bologna sandwich. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Right? Fried bologna sandwich. Look. Hot fries. Okay. All right. And if if you get a choice of size, so maybe you don't, right? <laughs> you get a choice of size. You don't want the hot fries combos. Mm. You know what I mean? This is the re- this is the Rashid Chappelle meal. I think this is gonna blow up. You know what I mean? Finish it with these these joints, Mike and Ike's. Okay. You know what I mean? We got them on deck. And you know what I mean? And then right here. Mm. I got a cherry joint Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? Look, 
I think this can go places. I'll call it the, the Rashid, Rashid Chappelle meal. Listen, toss it in the bag, jump off the back porch. You know what I mean? It got the art. Like right here, it would be your a sticker with your face on it. Got you, got you. You know what I mean? And it's and it would it would say Rasheed Chappelle meal. Put it in the back. You know, sling them off the off the back porch. Um, let's get let's go for it. The only thing is, I don't eat or have eaten any of that shit that you were supposed to. I don't. I never ate the hot fries. I never ate the combos. Never liked Mike and Nikes. <laughs> However, that don't mean that if the people want it, we can't give it to them. <laughs> this is this is about commerce. We yeah. gotta we gotta diversify, bro. You know what I mean? This is this is the the new level underground merch right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get at you in your DMs. Let's work. Yeah, please do. I'll get my get my business people right on it, man. Right. I'm a I got a lawyer too, so I'm gonna get an LLC popper, and I, I could sell this on my in my merch section, Mike Powers Merch. Dot Big Cartel. Dot Com. You could get these. You know what I mean, cheat mail. Yeah. Real, real talk. So thank you. So we just made history right there. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, right. We made a deal right on live. <laughs> you talk about a, a lot of real life situations in your music. Um, have, but have you touched the surface of showing the world who Rashid Chappelle is as a person? No, not really. I mean, there's a there's a, there's a lot of me. The people that truly know me. Um, they say I don't give a lot of like my sense of humor mm. in the music. And I, and I feel like um, I have to save something for me because there, there is no distinct, there is Rashid Chappelle, the artist, and there's Rashid Chappelle, the man. And like, I don't post my kids or anything online. Like that's for me, mm -hmm. right? I don't um, really do too much posting of my family online because that's for me, mm -hmm. you know? So who I, who I am, if, if you if you catch me on a one-on-one, -on -one, then, you know, we can have a conversation. But as far as, like, we're already too accessible that a person could DM you out of the blue and whatever the case may be. But all of who I am is inside of the music, though. Mm. Like, all of me is actually inside of the music. So if you listen, um, but again, maybe it's for people that truly know me, like, like, my homie, uh, my brother, Sugar Hill, like he tells me all the time, he's like, yo, I can't even believe you put that shit in a song. Mm. Like, I can't even, because he, you know, for the most part, he knows the things that have transpired in my life. So he's like, yo, I can't even believe you put that into a record. Yeah, it's out there forever. Yeah, but I mean, it's a part of my life. And if there's no character that I draw upon, like I, I don't get to be RoboCop or I don't get to be uh, Nino Brown. That's not who I get to be. I only get to be me, so I have to put it out there. With so many lyrical cats doing incredible work right now, honestly speaking, do you think it's enough bread in the economy of, of this underground shit to create generational wealth? Generational wealth. I don't know about generational wealth. Um, or would, there be, would there be a need to thin the herd? Or is it feasible that everybody can eat? Oh, it's definitely feasible that everybody can eat, man. There's, a, um, there's not just one artist in my iTunes or my, my Apple Music, there's 30, 40 artists. So as one person, I can listen to multiple artists. Mm. So one individual, um, a consumer can consume, you know, just in the course of a day, a consumer doesn't spend all his money in one place. Even if he does at Target, he's buying from aisle five, aisle six, aisle 11. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you think that people recognize how great of a storyteller you are? No. And how how hard was it for you to to write a song like uh, one hundred and one, which is a very detailed story? I don't I don't I don't think I, I don't think that the majority or or, or masses of people um, know how good I am, but that's my job to make it so. And um, it, it wasn't it wasn't difficult in the execution. Like it wasn't hard physically writing the record. Mm -hmm. Like once I had the idea and knew where I wanted to go. It was just filling out, you know, because I, I see the music. So it was just, mm. I just wait for the, the words to kind of come to me. So once I, I saw it, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Okay. And on the song, Aiding and Abetting, mm -hmm. you ride the beat so tough. Um, how many styles do you have, sir? I don't know. I mean, it, it, the, <laughs> the, the music really dicks it. Because I'm a guy that used to write to no beat. Mm, okay. so I, used to, I used to write to no beat which I, I wouldn't recommend to any up and coming MC mm. um, but once I, once I 
once I started writing to beats and more specifically, once I had producers giving me beats for me, not just like I made this beat, but once I started getting stuff catered to me, um, it, it got a little bit easier um, for me to kind of find my niche and find my, or find the pocket and, and what it was that um, they were giving me. Eight years ago, you dropped the song Break Loose mm -hmm. featuring DJ Scratch. Mm -hmm. Track is mad dope and you obviously torched the joint. Um, before you get ahead of me, let me say that it's very retro in nature regarding the delivery and the rapid fire Big Daddy Kane flow, right? So tell me everything about how you and DJ Scratch got connected. Um, my first album was produced entirely by Kenny Dope, who's really good friends with Scratch. And that particular song actually was Kenny's idea, the whole shit from the, from the cadence to, uh, you know, the BPM, everything. The Sonics of the record, and um, remember he was sending me a bunch of Kane records and shit. Like, yo, you gotta kind of try to find this pocket like this. Mm, wow. And he was like, all right, cool. And so, um, you know, I, I got the words together, and uh, I remember he called me on the phone with Scratch. I was like, I he he called me. He's like, yo, did you write the record? I'm like, yeah, I wrote the record. He's like, let me hear it. I spit it for him on the phone. He was like, yo, hold hold one second. And he called. He got Scratch on the phone. And he's like, yo, Scratch, he just, you got to hear this shit. <laughs> and that's, that's how, that was my first meeting of DJ Scratch via the phone. And uh, Scratch like, yo, that shit is crazy. It, like, I'm, it is crazy. Thank it you. Is. Thank you. Yeah, I, I watched this shit for Break Loose, and I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm like, he, 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 this sound like Big Daddy Kane, but it sound, he keeping up with Big Daddy. Nobody can do that. What you did on that record, you got to understand, when Big Daddy Kane was out, for a lot of people that don't know who might be younger than, you know, 30 or something like that, Big Daddy Kane was one of those guys that was the gold standard. You didn't want to mess with this dude, you know, and the stuff that he did. And I forget which song that Cadence is really reminiscent of. I want to say, um, damn, what was that fast-paced Big Daddy Kane? Set it off. Set it off. Mm-hmm. You kill it, dude. You kill it. Um, and that's a shock. So y'all go check out Break Loose. After you see this interview, go check that out. It's going to blow. If you're a real hip-hop fan, it's going to blow your mind. If you're not, fuck out of here. Um, what made you want to go uh, 1987 on that joint, besides the fact that you had, you know, um, Kenny Dope, you know, basically feeding you the playbook. Was that everything that was involved in it? Or did you have it in your mind that you did want to do something that sounded more retro previous to even receiving a beat like that? I mean, I've always, I mean, even prior to that, I mean, there's footage floating around the internet. We had done a song with Biz Marquee, um, you know, Prayers to Biz. Yes. Um, he, he did the beatbox. I wanted to do a record with somebody doing a beatbox. And so Biz came in and he did the beatbox for me and I and I kind of always been a fan of Slick Rick. And so I'm kind of, it's almost on some Lottie Dottie type shit. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, it's more like, all hell. I'm the rightful heir When I step into the room People stop and stare I'm so dashing And the haberdashy flawless Pescable When I'm sitting like Lacorish Finest fabrics Immaculate stitch And it's customized So it's just my fit Skin feeling smoother Than Egyptian silk I'm neatly groomed To the last hair Follicle monogram Cuffs in my name On the collar too I got you you know, no, let me. You wasn't around when Lottie Dottie first did. I don't know if you you wasn't, you probably went off the porch yet. I'm older than you. Definitely okay. wasn't off the porch when. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I was on the I was on the school bus headed to the other side of town, and somebody got on with a boombox, and they played Lottie Dottie. And that was the first time I'd ever heard it. And you talk about forty five kids on a school bus going ape shit. You know what I mean? We talk like maybe what fifth grade or something like that. Going crazy. Literally didn't play nothing but Lottie Dottie for a half hour ride all the way to school. Nothing okay, but so Lottie. you're about the same age as my cousin Latif then. Cause yeah. he, he he would he would do the beatbox and uh make me say the rhyme. Lottie Dottie? Yeah, because he had like a little bit of a speech impediment. So he would he would uh like like a not a pause like a, a pause almost when he spoke so he would he would have me you know you know lottie dotty he came to party don't call shovel and we bother nobody where just so, so i that 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 yeah i remember that 
Don't get me started. I know that cut. So when Snoop Dogg did it, it was risky, I think. I mean, but I think Snoop pulled it off. Uh, Snoop is a, I mean, Snoop got one of those voices, though. So, I, you know, he really couldn't do no, especially at that time, you know, mm -hmm. he, he couldn't do no wrong. Yeah. And he turned it into a gangster, you know, about what's going on in the hood. Uh, he put a West Coast spin on it. And I, I typically would say don't touch these type of songs. Like if somebody, if a female tell me I'm about to redo a Anita Baker song, you know, I might find a way to fucking get rid of her quickly. Unless it's, unless it's Layla Hathaway. She oh, now go. Oh, she did. Did she do Angel? Yeah, she did Angel. To death. Yeah. To yeah. death. Yeah. And yes, don't put me nowhere within arm's reach of Layla Hathaway. Because yeah. that's one of my crushes right there. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to get her on the record, so I feel... Oh! Like have y'all talked? Uh, just briefly. Like, I, 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 I've, been, I've been blessed. Um, for those that don't know, Kenny has worked extensively with Raheem Devon. So, Kenny Dope. Yeah, I got a chance to, to work with Raheem at length on a few projects. And so from there, I was able to meet Avery Sunshine and... Mm from Avery Sunshine and, and a bunch of different people. So when I reached out to Layla, of course I dropped Raheem's name and uh, she was very gracious, but um, yeah, she's definitely somebody that I would uh, like, you know. Layla Hathaway is just royalty. Like I said, my main inspirations didn't come from mm -hmm. um, the hip hop, um, but the R&B always influenced me. So I still kind of listen to that, you know, and my mom was heavy on it. You know, my dad too. But, like, my mom was, like, she had every, from Regina Bell to, you know, every black woman in America was rocking the Anita Baker haircut to um, Stevie to Michael Jackson to Hall & Oates to Pat Benatar to everything. So, we, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We listened to everything in the house, you know what I mean? And so all that shit is, is, is a part of me. Educationally speaking, it's obvious that you are, in fact, in love with the written word. Um, written and spoken word. Did you come from a background where education was paramount? I mean, they wanted me to go to school. You know, I did well in school, but, you know, as I got older, I realized that it was really me overcompensating or trying to mask the shit that was going on at home. You know, I, I, I tried to do well in spite of my parents being addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I kind of wanted to, to, to kind of mask that. Like, but it's so funny the way the universe works is I'm, I'm in first grade and uh, we're doing, it's, it's uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. And so I was the understudy for the, the, the person who was going to read the, I have a dream speech. Mm. Right. It was the understudy. Understudy. The, the, the per and, and the person whose name, the person who was picked to, to do it, his name was Rashid also. Mm. Rashid Richardson. I think I know right? where this is going. So oh. I think he got the chicken pox <laughs> a few days before the speech. Or a flat tire. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm in first grade. You know, I, I didn't have means like that at that time. And so, you know, Rashid, are you ready? And I remember being in first grade and I read the I Have a Dream speech. Mm. And I remember they took me out of my class and they had me reading it to first graders, second graders, third graders, kindergarten, everybody. Mm. Because they thought I had did such a good job of reading the speech. Yeah. But what, the moment that, that really moved me is I believe I was reading the speech to kindergarteners. And Ms. Brown, who was my first grade teacher, uh, excuse me, second grade. No, Miss Brown was a second grade teacher. I was in first grade with Miss McCormick. So second grade teacher Miss Brown, like you know these people, but second grade teacher Miss Brown was sitting there and she was like almost in tears. And I realized at that moment how important words were. Mm. How important words were. And it was like from that moment that like I really got into like reading the back of album covers and lyrics and everything like that with my mom because words were that important um sir how did you end up in a freestyle session with special ed oh that was after the um the rock steady reunion tour uh show and uh i think that was at the one i believe that was at central park summer stage 
And so they asked a few of us to come back to um, the radio station and kind of recap um, what took place. So Eclipse, shout out to DJ Eclipse and Rappers Out of Control. Shout out to Tor Ray, who was, before he had his own show, the tour guy was up there, had invited me back, uh, myself, Special Ed. I, I don't think anybody, maybe JS1, I think, was there as well. I don't remember. And, um, you know, I just, I just got blessed to be in the right place at the right time. And, and one of the people who I grew up listening to just happened to be sitting across from me. Listen, I'm the Magnificent. You know what I mean? I got, um, I got it made. Like that, you talk about classic joints right there. Um, on Franchise, song mm -hmm. Franchise, or the video, uh, there's a scene where patrons of a barbershop are having a discussion in the beginning about who's their number one MC. One says Rakim, one says Nas, but then someone comes in and says, What about Rashid Chappelle? And then you proceed to body the track as always. Is that something you think about? Is that how you see yourself as arguably, arguably one of the best that's ever done it? <laughs> uh, Let's talk about it now. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I mean, Yes, man. I mean, like, I, I think I, I believe that the, the, the time, effort and energy that I put into this uh, word for word, I feel like I can I can I can rock with anybody. And, you know, humility has always kind of been something that I've strived to be, but is not really respected. Um, people kind of when it goes back to the are you the nice guy question that you asked me earlier. Um, I'm very confident in my ability. Like I'm humble that I've been chosen to, I've been chosen to, to, to have this gift, but I'm not humble in my ability to use it because I know how much time I put into it. Like I know the, 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 the hours, I know the arguments, I know the sleeping on the couch. I know the, you know, I'm not speaking to you cause you've been at the studio. I, I know all that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I know spending my last dollars for studio time. I know I, I've been there. So I, I've rocked, I've, I, I, you know, at, in high school, I spit for Nas. You know, in high school, I went up to Marley Mall's house and spit for Marley Mall. You know, so like I've, I've been in Queensbridge and rapped. I've like at 17, 18 years old, like I've done this shit. What happened when you spit for Nas? <laughs> he told me keep writing. And mm. I and you took that as what? I'm not there yet. Because it, it was just like that. Like that was the the whole exchange. You spit your thing. He was like, "Keep writing." That was it. Yeah. Okay. But I knew at that if it didn't move him the way I wanted him to be moved, then there's more work. See, my thing is about the work, mm -hmm. and that's the thing where people get it fucked up. I'm about the work. Like, so you're not gonna outwork me. Like, there's not gonna be a track that you hear my, well, he took this bar off or he kind of took that song off. I don't, I don't, I don't play that game, you know? And the same thing when I do features, like people try to have like this amazing verse on every feature. But my whole thing is like, it's it, in the context of the song, what's, what song are we making? Cause mm -hmm. anybody can just rap mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. doesn't really impress me. You know, my, my, the thing that impressed me is like, yo, this motherfucker just made a dope song and Annie killed it. You know what I mean? So it's like the overall product of it. Like, is this, it, it, hooks don't be matching the lyrics. Lyrics don't be matching hooks. It just, you know, so when I listen to it, I just say, okay, if that's going on over here, let me kind of move this way. Like, that's always been my thing. Oh, you did Ways and Means, the album with 38 Special. And um, you look at like official trust gang right now. It's a fact. So you are trust gang. That's a fact. Trust. Okay. Uh, the intro is you giving a toast to your teammates and showing that respect to Spech. Uh Can you tell me what 38 Spech means to you personally? Personally, Spech yeah. is my brother mm. for life. Mm. Like what, what, what this man, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say other than he's my brother. Like I can't, he didn't have to fuck with me. Mm -hmm. You know, so he, 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 he threw a lifeline when I was going. So my first album came out in 2011. My second album then came out until 2018. So 
Yeah. So he, when there was a time when, you know, I was hot, you know, coming into the game in 2011 and, oh shit, this Rashid Chappelle. And, you know, as time moves away, yes, we did tours and we went to Europe and Japan and all. Yes, that's great. But in the, but in the marketplace, you have to drop content. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the case with me. So especially through a lifeline, more than a lifeline, Mm -hmm. um, at a time when I wasn't really in the spotlight and he didn't have to do that. And he did it and he gave me the platform, all of the resources, every like, yo, come, come flourish. Like come rock with Shea Noor, come do a song with Planet Asia, come do a song with me, get on this track with Rome Streets, dude. Like, come on, let's get it. And I, I'm appreciative and there's nothing he couldn't ask me for that he couldn't get from me. Like that's my brother for real. Word up, I love that guy. Um, you only got elite features on there. He was just alluding to that. You got Mussolini on there. PA is on there. Of course, if people don't know PA, Planet Asia, Get mm-hmm. Hip, Jamal Gasol, and you got Shay on there. Um, mm-hmm. For real, though, what's the convo like behind closed doors with all those legendary spitters? Is is everybody sweating, making sure that they got the right shit because PA is around? Or is it like the Chicago Bulls, like, on their third championship? Uh, different times, different, you know, different energies at different times. I love it. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a I'm – a, uh, I think Planet Asia is one of the, the greatest MCs to ever walk the planet. And, um, you know, I, I believe that, like, undoubtedly. And so the first session for me with him was kind of like, okay, let's, let's get it. You know, and um, we ended up doing, like, maybe four or five joints that night. You know, but it's just like, um, yeah, like, I'm nice, too. Like, come oh, on. You, 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 you extremely, extremely nice. You, you are definitely an elite level MC. Thank um, you. Approaching, you know, as long as you keep dropping – you obviously you're gonna hit that legend status. Um, but let me ask you about Planet Asia. Can you can you confirm for me that he is indeed a human being and not I cannot confirm that. I can that I cannot confirm. <laughs> because I've seen this man literally doze off, not even doze, but kind of get into like this uh this space of the weed and the and the, the lateness of the hour. And you know, the, the beat is playing. And he just jump up and he's like, yo, I got, I'm ready. And, he, and he'll, have, he'll have like a whole song. He wasn't sitting there writing? No. He'll, he'll sit there, like he'll start jotting something. And then he'll kind of like get into like this, you know, this, I don't want to call it a stupor, but he kind of gets into this zone or he gets into this, I don't know what you call it, space. Mm-hmm. And uh, he'll be like, yo, I got the rhyme. And, I, and, I, and I've seen now... I think I work pretty fast, mm-hmm. you know, as far as like once I, once, once the beat moves me and I start writing, it doesn't take long, mm-hmm. but he, he's a machine. Anybody get up like that and just drop a 16. Correct. That sounds that it's not like a dude worked on it for like four months. No PA. I've seen people like the record that we have on my album, the, the album that not, not the album was special, but the album that's dropping with, um, uh, with, with Buck Wild. Buck Wild. What's the name of his album again? Sinners and Saints. It's dropping on November 20th, right? So I literally called him while I was at the studio. So I'm in, I was in Queens. He was, in, he was back in LA. He didn't pick up. By the time we got back to Jersey, it's like maybe 11, 12. He calls. He's like, yo, what's good? Like, I'm like, peace, God. He's like, um, he's like, you good? I'm like, yeah. No, first question he always asks me is like, yo, you out here? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not in LA. I'm, I'm, I'm in New York. I'm like, yo, but me and Buck is working on this album. I need a verse. And I got him on speakerphone, and Buck was like, yeah, you know, if you're an elite level MC, you'll have it back in 24 hours. Ooh. And so, and so, PA is like, yo, man, I'm at the studio right now, but I got to knock out all these features, man, like. I'm swamped, bro. I don't know. I'm like, yo, PA, I need this verse. Mm. Mm. Rashid and Buckwild. Mm. Yeah. I got the verse in my inbox at 2.54 a.m. 2.54 a.m. from when I hung up, from whatever he had to do, 2.54 a.m. I had that verse. Salute to the workmanship and the high level. Quality. My God goodness um you know he's the kind of guy that 
uh, smacks me, elbows me, uppercuts me every time. every time. And then, of course, it's like, I don't know how to describe any further the album Anchovies. I just don't even know how to, I don't, I don't know, like, what the, I, I, I love Thriller. Like, that's an album. And I like, you know, Run DMC's first album. I love Paid in Full by Eric B and Rakim, Illmatic. I love that the Anchovies is sort of like right there to me. You know what I mean? To me, it's Golden Buddha. Mm, yes. That, yep. that, that album, I mean, him and Apollo got busy on anchovies, yep. but that Golden Buddha album, I'm at the, what do you say? I'm at the hotel getting top like a yarmulke. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, like yo. <laughs> yo. Just ill stuff, though. Ill stuff. Um, and then I love the video for, oh my God, what's the name of the fucking song where he be in the hallway? Spech just did it. It's on the Trust um, Chain album. I'm on a, a Peace God. You got it, God. I think it's a Wisdom Power. I forget the name of the record, but yeah. It's like yeah. Mystery, Mystery School. Mystery School. Mystery, the beat on that joint. Woo! Right. Woo, took me back with that one. Um, and so, and you're not a 70s baby like I am, right? Okay. Um, because in the beginning of First Brick sort of sounds like my upbringing. Um, is like you talk about the, the, the like the, the, the smoke in the air and this whole environment, you kind of set the scene. Um, and so and I think you talked about that in the beginning, but it just reminds me of my upbringing. So with all of these things going down that you're describing, music was a part of that, though, in that whole menagerie of what was going on in your life. Even with mom having her struggles, dad doing what he was doing, there was music being played in, in the household. Of course. And, yeah. who, and mom was responsible for the playing of the music? Mom was responsible for the soul, you know, okay. but like the... the 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 rap shit like when I would go to my cousin's house like mm -hmm. you know my uncle Darren my uncle John like my uncle John had the 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 uh, the, the Honda the box body Civic back in the day oh yeah 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 you know so you know he had the Honda scooter you know my uncle Darren had the um uh, the Dodge Omni you know what I mean so we riding around I'm sitting there you know rocking back and forth and 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 I'm listening to you know, ultra magnetic MCs. I'm listening to Rob Bass. Mm. I'm listening to um, fucking Run DMC. I'm listening to Eric B and Rakim. I'm coming in the house, Jim Brown, Ski. Like all this shit is playing. You know, my grandparents just have a, par a cookout down the back. And so you got Planet Rock Rock and you got um, Video Music Box giving me Fresh Prince, Jazzy Jeff, mm. uh, Kid and Play. Um, and then we would have our own parties at Miss Hicks, we used to call it Miss, you know, I said it on one of the records, you know, Miss Hicks the Disco, Sugar Bills, Big Horace and Cisco, like, like the, like for the kids, while the parents was around the corner at Sugar Bills partying, we was down in the project's basement partying and you had my cousin D.Y. DJing, you had Haskell Berry DJing, giving us public enemy, giving us all this shit. And, and, and you know, we seven, eight years old, but we, and they're partying like fucking grownups. And it was mm. like, and, and, and our parties would go to one o'clock in the morning. Mm. And at one o'clock in the morning, we leave, we go around the corner. Our parents is on Passaic Street, right there across the street from what we call the Chicken Holiday. And they in the bar doing a thing. We sneaking in the bar, getting money from them, doing whatever, going across the street. So we hanging out with the pimps, the hoes, mm -hmm. the fucking dope dealers, the drunks. You know, this bar, Sugar Bills, not to glorify anything, but people were killed in this fucking bar. Mm -hmm. You know, my mm -hmm. cousin Watiba, her, her father was stabbed in front of this bar and killed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, across the street, um, one of the first lessons that I ever learned about what it means to, like, truly be a friend and, you know, you ride with your friends until the end. One of my pop's friends killed the man in this bar mm -hmm. and, he, and he was on a run. Yeah. And I wait and, and so I'm in the house and I look up and I see this this man come through the door. And I'm like, oh shit. Like I just seen this, like he was on it, and he, my father's like, yo, man, that's 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 what he's just my friend. So, you know, I don't that's why I don't use that word lightly. Like that's my friend. So it was like this this extends beyond everything. Yeah. You know. And this guy is just coming to your house after catching a body. When, and my father is who he is. Like, yeah, okay, he's around my son, and and ain't shit gonna happen. Cause right. this, you know what I mean. So it's it's just 
You know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, man. I learned a lot in that environment. Uh, you got a joint called Iron Head. That's produced by Spesh. You dedicated to Iron Head Hayward, the mm-hmm. legendary NFL fullback. What was the significance of that dedication? You know, I, I, I think a lot of people, man, we don't get our flowers. Like a lot of people don't get their flowers. And Iron Head was a source of pride, a source of inspiration where we from, man. And it's just like, you know, I feel like I want to be able to provide that to people. I don't care if you don't want to do independent music, if you want to do pop music, commercial, whatever you want to do. But know that there's somebody that's championing this shit right where you from. Like, I'm right from where you from. And, and I tell people all the time, like, yo, like, I'm from right here. Mm. I'm from, you know, I haven't lived in Forsaken like a while, but it's like, yo, like I'm from right here. I still go there to get my fucking hair cut. I still hang out. Like I still come through. Like I'm from right here and everything that you want to do, you could do, but you got to put your mind to it and you got to do the fucking work. There's no handouts. Yeah. Nobody's extending a hand, pulling you into success. You got to do it yourself. That's exactly right. And then what do you, what's coming up in the future? We know we got, it's called Saint, Sinners and Saints. Sinners and Saints. Buckwild dropping on the 20th. That's Friday. You're dropping that at, at, at midnight? Midnight tonight, actually. Midnight. Okay, so midnight tonight. This video might, I don't know, it might come out Saturday or Sunday. But it'll drop. It, so that, that'll drop. And then what do you got in the pipeline coming up? Um, in the pipeline, I got people enjoying that album. I got people talking about that album. I got people... Uh, respecting um, the work that Buck and I put into that album. But yeah. then after that, you know, Special and I knocked out another project um, called Checks and Balances. Um, I got another project uh, we'll recognize real uh, called No Error for Margin. Um, and uh, another album called Sugar Bills produced by the Archetype. Um, so I'm always working. And my thing is that I, I was away you know, for a few years from dropping albums, full projects. And um, it made me, because I, I, I've always loved the art of it. Like, I love the art of it. And my thing is, there's a lot of people giving you quantity, but I want to give you quality and quantity. You know, like, I understand, you know, I sat back from 18, 2018 to 2019, just really under the tutelage, watching how Spech works, mm. watching how he moves, mm. while, you know, learning, figuring shit out. And it's like, okay, now that I have, you know, the pr- and always working, always creating. And it's like, okay, now that I got all my ducks in a row, I'm going to take my hat off and I'm going to throw it into the ring. I'm going to say, okay, so this mythical pound for pound spot, I'm, I, I like to challenge whoever has it. You're definitely making a strong run. Uh, I respect the work. I know the people that follow this channel and are supporters of mine have said for a very long time, reach out talk to this guy i'm so glad i did and i'm not to rain on your parade or nothing like that because i you know you could you could get money in music and when when we open back up the economy touring and things like that and merch you know what i mean so but don't forget you know the big money is coming right here this yeah is, i mean that's I, i'm texting my, my lawyer's texting me now about yeah. that like don't get don't don't get sidetracked with the bars and forget about what we got going here you know what i mean yeah the rc mail yeah we could we could make this happen. You know yeah. what I mean, um, not very nutritious, but very much profitable. Rashid Chappelle, it was an honor to have the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, sir, for dropping by the Mike Power Show. We wish you nothing but continued blessings, peace, and success, sir. Thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Mike. Like, there's people like you who are going to be the curators and and the people that document mm-hmm. this new era of hip hop, man. Like people always talk about the golden era. They talk about the nineties. This era of hip hop is, 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 is amazing. The mm-hmm. artistry, the lyricists, the entrepreneurship. Yeah. And for you to take your time out of your life to document this shit that needs to be saluted as well, bro. So as an artist, as a fan of the culture, I appreciate everything that you're doing as well. Thank you for saying that. If y'all didn't hear that, Rasheed Chappelle said, I'm hot. Now I'm good to I'm good to go right now. Thank you, sir. I got the I got the stamp from a guy who's on his way to becoming a legend. Certainly out here, I would call him a top ten lyricist in this sport out here. Amongst all this underground thing that's going on, you're not beating him. And if you want to call me a liar, let's talk about that shit in the comment section. All right, Rasheed Chappelle. Once again, thank you, sir. I really do appreciate it. Appreciate you, man.